In this video on examination maneuvers for diplopia, we will discuss cover tests, Maddox and double Maddox rod tests, the Hirschberg test, and the Krimsky test. Cover tests can help identify and quantify ocular misalignment or strabismus. There are three types of cover tests. The cover-uncover test, the alternate cover test, and the simultaneous prism and cover test. The monocular cover-uncover test can differentiate whether a misalignment is atropia or aphoria. Atropia is a deviation that is always present, even when both eyes are open and working together. Aphoria, on the other hand, is a deviation that appears when binocular vision is disrupted, such as when one eye is closed or covered. The deviation can be vertical or horizontal. If the eye deviates upward, it is a hypertropia while if it deviates downward is a hypotropia, and if it deviates outward is exotropia, and if it deviates inward is esotropia. And the same nomenclature applies for phorias. For this test, the patient fixates on a point straight ahead and an occluder is held to cover one eye for a few seconds. The occluder is removed, the patient refixates on the point, and it is repeated with the opposite eye. If atropia is present, as seen in this video, the patient will have misaligned eyes at baseline when both eyes are uncovered. Either that eye or the opposite eye will be misaligned depending on which eye you occlude. When the opposite eye is occluded, the deviating eye will move into the straight position to fixate. In this case, the patient has an outward deviation, which is consistent with exotropia. If aphoria is present, as seen in this video, the occluded eye will deviate when it is covered and will return to a straight position when the occluder is removed. In this case, the patient has an outward deviation which is consistent with exophoria. The alternate cover test measures the total deviation of tropia and phoria using prisms. For this test, the patient fixates on a point straight ahead while the examiner alternates back and forth occluding each eye, moving rapidly but making sure the non-occluded eye refixates on the point before alternating. To quantify the deviation, the alternate cover test is repeated using increasing prism powers until the deviating eye no longer shifts. The amount of prism power required to eliminate eye movement is the measure of deviation. While the alternate cover test measures total deviation, the simultaneous prism and cover test measures tropia only. The test is performed by simultaneously placing the occluder over the fixating eye and the prism over the deviating eye. Again, the test is repeated using increasing prism powers until the deviating eye no longer shifts. The Maddox rod test can measure horizontal and vertical deviations. A Maddox rod is an instrument composed of red cylindrical lenses oriented in parallel to one another. The lenses convert a point source of light into a red line. To test for horizontal deviations, the Maddox rod should be aligned so the cylinders are horizontal, and vice versa for testing vertical deviations. When the rods are aligned vertically, the patient fixates on a point source of light and will see a horizontal red line with the covered eye and the original light source with the other eye. With the Maddox rod covering the deviating eye, ask the patient what they see. If the white light is above the red line, a hyperdeviation is present. If the white light is below the red line, a hypodeviation is present. Then the rods are rotated horizontally in this example covering the right eye, to test for horizontal deviations. If the light is on the left side of the line, an esodeviation is present. And if the light is on the right side, an exodeviation is present. To measure the amount of deviation, the examiner will use prisms of increasing power until the line superimposes the point. The double Maddox rod test measures cyclotropia or torsional deviations of the eye. 
A Maddox rod is placed in a trial frame or foreopter and positioned in front of each eye with the rods aligned vertically so that the patient sees horizontal lines. The rods are rotated until the lines are perceived to be parallel. If the rod has to be rotated inward, the patient has incyclotorsion. If the rod has to be rotated outward, the patient has excyclotorsion. The degree of rotation required for the lines to be parallel determines the torsional deviation. The Hirschberg test is a corneal light reflex test useful in patients who cannot cooperate sufficiently to allow for cover testing or who have poor fixation, such as infants. When the patient fixates on a light source, the light reflection should be symmetric in each eye near the center of each pupil. If there is misalignment of the eyes, the corneal light reflection appears asymmetric and off-center in the deviating eye. Every one millimeter of displaced light reflex corresponds to roughly 15 diopters of deviation. There are a few landmarks useful for estimating the deviation. As an estimation, a light reflex at the pupillary margin is about 2 millimeters from the center of the pupil or 30 diopters of ESO deviation. And if the light reflex is at the mid iris, it is about 4 millimeters from the center of the pupil, which is about 60 diopters of deviation. The Krimsky test is used to quantify deviations using the corneal light reflex and prisms. While the patient is fixating on a light source, a prism is placed in front of the deviating eye to center the reflection. The test is repeated using increasing prism powers until the light reflection is centered on the deviating eye.